Welcome to MMA FanCast. As always, my name's Luke Payson, and I am honored to be joined by a first-time guest of the show, Travis the Mauler. Long. Travis, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited. It's always my pleasure and honor to have a first-time guest of the show, hopefully becoming a regular in the future. You've got a lot of exciting things going on. You recently, back in October of 2022, you made your MMA amateur debut. Um, so we're going to talk about that. You got a nice win there. Um, and you have another fight coming up in February. But let's let's back up. This is your first time on. You're 19 years old, so that's pretty exciting. What sports competition uh, activities did you do prior to getting into MMA? So when I was in my eighth grade year, I played one year of football. And I wasn't really feeling football. You know, I wasn't too good at it. I didn't know very well. So I talked with some family, and they said, let's try to wrestle. So my eighth grade year, I started wrestling and I wrestled for my middle school. I wrestled for a little league we have down here where I live called JJWA and I wrestled all the way through high school. So with me wrestling, I just found so much love for it. And it was so fun for me that after I graduated high school, I needed something that amounted to wrestling and what wrestling did for me and that's when I found MMA and speaking of finding MMA I know that you've been training at Shark Pit BJJ and EP Rattler so talk a little bit about those two different gyms and sort of what their specialty are and kind of what you do there that, that got you prepared for the October fight so I just recently started training at Shark Pit but before I trained at EP Rattlers that is my home gym that's more of a, it's more of a wrestling gym, but we, we can do, we do a lot of MMA there as well. My, um, and it's very beneficial for me because my middle school wrestling coach is the one who actually owns the gym. So, you know, we have uh, days where no one else is in there where me and a big group of other people who are training for fights or just training MMA all in general, go in, you know, four or five hour session in there, just, working on everything you know right now we're training more fight specific scenarios but i would say without ep rattlers gym my training would be very tough to do um and then shark pit i'm very grateful for them letting me come in and train with those guys those guys are awesome uh there's a pro fighter ant wilson he's a he's a coach there he's been phenomenal and helping me getting my striking right and just giving me the little the little tips and tricks that you really you throw those little tips and tricks into your game it makes a huge improvement so huge shout out to ep rattlers huge shout out to shark pit much appreciated for the work that you guys let me get in and the training and the tips and speaking of all that training and all that work you put in uh, kind of let's talk a little bit about the fight you had for Cagezilla um, back in October, October 15th. You won by unanimous decision. Now, for people that don't necessarily know, you, you took the hardest type of debut amateur fight because in Virginia, the state of Virginia, where Cagezilla is based out of, the rule set governed by their state is that amateurs fight under a pro rule set. So if you could do it in the UFC, you can do it in amateur where most other states, at least the ones in our area, Pennsylvania, Ohio, New York, New Jersey, um, West Virginia, they all have some limited rule sets. So what was it like making your amateur debut in a rule set where you could knee and elbow and kick and do all the stuff that that is sometimes reserved for more of the pros? So I actually liked it. I actually love the, you know, I'm a huge UFC fan, always have been, and I love that going in there, you know, with just your gloves on. You don't got the head gear, you don't got the leg kicks, because when you fight in a setting where you had those head gears, those leg pads to fight as an amateur, and then when you switch pro, it's going to be all new to you. You're going to feel kicks that you haven't felt, punches you haven't felt because of that padding. So without all that and fighting under – a pro rule set it kind of gets you it gets you prepared for when you do go pro for when you oh I'm sorry 
for when you do feel those big shots, it gets you prepared for all of that. And that's what, that's what I love about that uh, pro rule set as an amateur fighter. Well, and I mean, obviously that's the mindset you have to have to be willing to go into an app, your pro, your debut amateur fight under a pro rule. So very exciting. Also, it was a three, three minute uh, fight. So you got nine minutes in. What was it like? You won the unanimous decision. Kind of summarize that fight for us. Um, So the fight, you know, I fought, I fought a guy named Reed, Dombros Reed Dombrowski. He was out of a very highly, highly officiated gym in Virginia. Um, I can't think of the gym name right now, unfortunately, but, um, no, you know, he was, he was a shorter opponent and he had, we had just about the same amount of training time, I believe. Um, you know, first round, I talked with the people in my corner and they said, take the first round, use it as a strategy round, you know, find your range, set, set stuff up, see what he's going to do. So the uh, first round I came out, we threw some strikes and I wasn't really feeling my striking wasn't to where it should have been. So I wasn't really feeling that the striking aspect. So I decided to go wrestling and with my wrestling, I was able to take him to the ground and control the match the entire time. You know, um, I found what had worked for me. It might not be the exciting thing, but I found what would work for me for this first fight to get me the win. So I know we got him on, on the ground and he wasn't able to move. I was just putting a lot of top pressure on him. I was hitting him with a lot of elbows. Um, then beginning of the second round, we came out. I tried to strike a little bit, just could not make contact. He couldn't make contact with me either. So, you know, he, I got him up against the cage. I got a takedown. It was just the whole time. It was just, top pressure, making him uncomfortable, hitting him with a lot of shots from bottom. And I came out with the win. Well, that's a great congratulations to you. And also you pointed out the, the uh, necessity of listening to your coaches between rounds. That's always important. You, I love when fighters talk about that game plans have to change on the fly. And the beauty of MMA is that there's, so many different levels to where you can take it. You know, some people like the open striking at distance. Some people like the uh, more brawling style, which is mid distance. Some people like the clinch, which is more of the Muay Thai, the knees, the elbows. Sometimes people like the cage work. We've seen how as MMA develops and develops, some people are pressuring people up against the cage more and using the cage almost as a vertical mat. And then, of course, you got into the ground game. And to our point that we made a couple minutes ago, it sounds like the rule set of elbows on the ground helped you kind of have that dominant pressure that a lot of amateurs in Pennsylvania, when I interview um, amateur MMAs, the, uh, MMA fighters, they complain because they, if they're wrestling dominant, they take somebody to the ground, they can't punch them or hit them on the ground anywhere above the clavicle. So they end up having to strike to the chest and the stomach, and it doesn't really set up the ground uh, and pound that you had. So sounds like an absolutely... Great learning experience to you. And obviously, in the future, you know, you'll find your range. You'll figure out the, the striking as it goes. Every opponent's different. What do you think you kind of learned the most about yourself or were the most pleased with out of your first fight? Um, I was very pleased with my nerves and my anxiety, honestly. Um, you know, backstage, I had I had one of my best friends who also fight on the Cage Zilla card the same day I did, and I was his cornerman. Before he even went out and fight, you know, my nerves were getting the best of me and everything. And uh, when I went out and cornered him and was cage side, all those nerves kind of just went away. And I went backstage and I was warming up. I, I think I was the third fight of the night. Mm -hmm. I was warming up, and as I started walking out to the cage, those nerves just left, and I, I locked in. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm ready to go. And I'm just, I'm really happy that I didn't have those nervous jitters in there. Cause I feel like if the nervous jitters would have got to me, then it would have went a different way. And MMA, you can't, you can't really be nervous. You can't hesitate because when that happens and you get knocked out or taken down or lose the fight. So I'm very happy that my nerves were controlled, that 
and I was able to go out there, get the job done, and realize that there was nothing to be nervous about in the first place. Well, and, and the fact that you overcame your nerves in your very first fight, that definitely uh, really shows that, you know, this fight out, you'll, you'll be even more common experience being there. Uh, you mentioned knowing somebody, you know, that you cornered somebody on that car, which is always fun. Uh, a friend of mine and a friend of MMA FanCast, uh, Hunter Starner, for people that watch MMA FanCast, they know that we've had Hunter Starner on a bunch. I got to call one of his uh, title fights as an amateur when he was fighting amateur, but he made his pro debut on the same night later in the card. And I think you said that you got to watch him. So what do you remember from Hunter? This is purely personal. I know Hunter, I'm a big fan of him and he's doing quite well at the pro ranks. So what, did, and he's fights the same way you do. So what did you like about watching Hunter's uh, pro debut? I like, I like his aggression, his aggressiveness in the way that he doesn't just, he doesn't just take, shots that are just there he sets everything all if you watch hunter very closely he sets everything up with the way he moves his feet with the punches that he throws everything by him is set up i think he's just he's a dominant dude um i was actually talking about hunter last night because i train i train with a guy who cross trains at hunter's gym mm -hmm. and we were just talking about how hunter's just you know he's a train like he runs through everyone. He's the dude. He's just, he's strong. He's fast, and I think I think he's a great fighter. I didn't see too too much of his fight, but the little bit I did see that he was setting everything up. His shots looked beautiful, and the dude can strike. the 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 dude can really throw hands. Well, what's fun there is um, that's that's where your trajectory is too. You know, Hunter came in with a with a good wrestling background you're coming in with a good wrestling background you're training with the right people you keep adding skill sets I, I know one of the reasons why hunter's hands are the way they are is because he trains with a lot of muay thai his his coaches and his trainers are muay thai he recently went over to thailand last summer before he went pro to just take muay thai fights so there's all types of ways to add skill sets to the base that you have and obviously i um, I can't wait to follow you and your career. And I'm already in the process of following uh, Hunter's career. So it's also cool how gyms and cross training, you end up hearing about people and um, you're at the 135 pound weight class, which is also his weight class. So it's kind of cool for you to be able to see somebody who's a couple years ahead of you, as far as turning pro you're in the amateur ranks, but it all builds into each other. Speaking of the, the next level and building, you've got your second fight coming up. It's going to be for Cagezilla as well which is always exciting to go back to the same promotion. February 22nd, so exactly a month away. So 25th, 25th, February oh, 25th. Well, I was given the wrong date, but we'll say a, just a touch over a month <laughs> away, February 25th, um, So, which is 10 months from Christmas. For people that keep track of Christmas, that's 10 months away from Christmas, so you, you can start making your shopping list. But anyhow, um, talk to me about that fight. You're fighting Joseph. Casa and what's the what's the game plan and kind of what do you want to see out of yourself coming into your second fight for Cagezilla February 25th? So I won't give too much away the game sure. plan just in case you'd happen to see, but uh, you know the guy the guy's a lot shorter than me. He's five five. Uh, he's he's had two fights. Um, I do have I do have a little bit of footage on him. Mm -hmm. I've seen how I've seen how he fights and I know how to uh. I'm working a lot of fight scenarios mm. that I've seen him do to be able to defend and throw shots on him. You know, I'm going to a lot of range, you know, he's shorter guy, my range, I'm almost six foot tall. So, you know, my range is really going to come and help with me there. Um, and I don't think I have to worry about going to the ground too much, even though, even though he is a blue belt, his uh his takedowns on getting you to the ground isn't very well. So I think I'm mainly just going to have to worry about my striking and throwing. A, I plan on throwing a lot of kicks, a lot of kicks. Well, I think it's great that your second fight in that you're, you know, you're challenging yourself with somebody that has, uh, you know, two fights. That doesn't sound like a lot, but that's double the number of yeah. MMA fights you have. And that's kind of what you, you want to do. You want to be fighting people with a little bit more experience to kind of test you and build. I also love the fact, obviously, gyms and training, you got to be secretive and, and specific to what's going on. But I love the fact 
that you're training um, to his strengths. That way your strengths get better. That's a big, that's a big thing. Know what he's good at and get better at, at being defensive and offensive based on that. Sounds like you're doing everything right. It's probably more fun for people that don't know. Sometimes in any type of fight, whether it's uh, boxing, kickboxing, Muay Thai, BJJ, or uh, MMA, if if you're never taking competitions, whatever that looks like, sometimes you can get like, you can just kind of get in a rote in training and just kind of do the stuff that you always like to do. I think what's cool, you're super new to the sport, but by taking this fight coming up here in a, a month and a couple of days, you're kind of forced to add on and to and to improvise and to learn. New, and then if you get somebody the next fight that's different and has different skills, you're constantly. So for people out there, if you're not into MMA, but it, it's jujitsu, then start doing jujitsu tournaments because that'll push you or whatever the situation is. I think competition really helps to your point, really, really helps you have to develop. So very exciting. I think it's been fantastic for me to have you on uh, to MMA FanCast. I'm always looking to follow the careers of uh, people who are really focused at developing their skill level, catching you after your first amateur MMA fight, I think is perfect timing. And so I appreciate your willingness to come out. Why don't you wrap up with some thank yous or some shout outs, any, any people you want to kind of give credit to, because even though you fight alone in the cage with the ref and your opponent, you've got both a team physically that trains you, but also your support, uh, whether it's your friends or family that don't know anything about MMA, but still are in your team as far as supporting you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So definitely need to shout out my people at the gyms, Ron Bradbury over EP Rattlers. Uh, without that gym, you know, the training would be much harder than uh, Shark Pit BJJ. I need to shout out Aunt Wilson and the owners, uh, owners over there at uh, that gym. And then uh, my two main training partners at Paul Breeden and Zach Vincent. You know, those two, those two guys, Paul, Paul Breeden and Zach Vincent, those two guys have made me made me the fighter that I am with the knowledge and the experience that both of them have and them taking their time. You know, both of them are fighters, but them taking their time to train with me almost every day and to give me the knowledge and to put in the work with me. Huge shout out to those two guys. Well, I appreciate your willingness to come on best skills to you February 25th for Cage Zilla. Can't wait to have you back on after that fight to kind of talk us through how that uh, goes for you. So thanks so much. You've been listening or watching MMA Fancast with Luke Basin and first time guest of the show, Travis the Mauler. Long. Thanks so much, pal. Thank you. You got it.